Good morning everybody. Welcome back to another vlog. Did it look like I was saying that? No. Today I would like to specifically welcome you to the ultimate active recovery day vlog. <laughs> like a big title card. Yeah, that's what's gonna happen. The ultimate active recovery day vlog. We had some requests on my Instagram, just kind of showing what we do um, in between heavy training days, which I think is a very undervalued um, aspect of people's training. So I'm really happy to do that. I know for me personally, especially when I was younger, I kind of saw this day as more of like a filler day, just like go through the motions, get it over with so you can get back to the stuff that you really want to be doing the rest of the week. Eating. But, pardon? Eating. Eating. That's what I want to get back to. <laughs> but as I get older, I experience more injuries and stuff. I am realizing how truly important this day is. In my mind, an active recovery day differs from just like a recovery day because on a recovery recovery day, which is just Sundays for us, I guess, that's just a day that we don't do anything. And I see that more so as like that's like an off day. An yeah. off day to just do nothing to allow your body to recover from everything you put it through like in the days before that. So for us it would be like a really heavy speed endurance day on the Saturday followed with a lift. Sorry. Whereas an active recovery day I see that more so as like recovery and prep for the day that comes after. I'm just doing some stuff today to like recover but also get activated for a good session tomorrow. You still have to get like the blood pumping in active recovery days. Like you want blood flow. And like, if there's like a little bit of lactic, like it just kind of flushes it out. And then, yeah, like an off day is just like, you're just, you're just like mentally drained too. So you just take it completely off. Yeah, I'm gonna give you a little glimpse of what I'm doing today, what works for me. When we were back in Canada, I actually didn't have facility access. Um, on Wednesdays which is my active recovery day so I was just like on the bike doing mobility stuff and I never really find that the bike like does it for me I just I don't get my heart rate high enough um, I just like don't feel it enough in my muscles so um, I'm happy to have the opportunity to do some running again on my active recovery days um, so that's why it's kind of been a bit of a process these past few weeks figuring out what works for me first thing I'm gonna start with is um, just some yoga uh, get some mobility in there before I start moving around a bit more. Uh, we just walked a lap because I guess we're just those people now that want like a really slow start, a warm up for the warm up. So I'm gonna get into this and I'll check back in with you guys when I'm finished. slash mobility flow is complete. I'm not really like trying to stretch when I do that, but I like to do yoga like as my very first thing to just kind of like softly go through like different movements and like get the body going before I start my actual warm up because I just hate the feeling of going into a jog and like feeling like absolute trash. So it gets everything kind of ready for the warm up. So next I'm going to do my jog and then just like a really easy um, dynamic stretching type of warm up.
So two things about my warm up on active recovery day. First of all, I like to do as much of it as possible on the grass. Not only do I welcome the opportunity to get on a softer surface for my joints, um, but there's a lot of research out there about how um, it's really positive to expose your body to multiple surface types. Second of all, I like to keep the warm up as like simple and general as possible. So really it's just a bunch of um, dynamic stretching and skipping. I don't like to do anything too specific. If you are a track and field athlete, you know how monotonous and repetitive um, the warm up can get. So if anything, it's a nice like mental break from doing the same thing that you do every other day or most other days. Um, so yeah, I just keep it really general and simple in the warm up and that is all I have to say about that. finally time to get into the meat of this thing. I'm doing a circuit that alternates between a run and an exercise. This is what I have found generally works best for me in terms of feeling good the next day. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an exercise, run 100 meters, an exercise, run 100 meters, an exercise, run 200 meters. So last week I tried this but instead of doing the 200 I did a 400 um, and I was running them in like 80 seconds. And the next day I felt good, but I think my run could have felt more aggressive. And I'm attributing that to maybe the 400s being too much for my little triple jumper body. So today I'm gonna to try 200. But the reason I was avoiding doing 200s in the first place is because I tend to do them way too fast. Like I'll run them in like sub 30 just because I want to, but that's not active recovery for a triple jumper. The three exercises that I'm doing between the runs is I'm going to do glute bridges down here, single leg squats down there, and then speed skaters back over here. So you just won't see the single leg squats. I'm going to do that set three times and probably just take like four or five minutes between each one. But yeah, I'll keep you updated as I go. All right, so I just finished two sets of that circuit and I'm actually going to leave it at that. I feel pretty good. I don't think I could feel any better doing a third one, so I don't wanna risk like overdoing it. It's pretty hot today. I don't wanna be out here any longer than I need to be. And that's kind of the beauty of active recovery day. Um, it's kind of funny because any other day, I'm like pretty um, unflexible when it comes to deviating away from what the plan for the session is whereas with this I kind of just like feel it out listen to my body and you know really try to be in tune with like what I think that I need in order to feel ready for the next day if we were earlier in the season I would do the entire circuit because you can also use it as an opportunity to you know build a little bit of fitness but at this point in the game like that's obviously not the goal so I'm not worried about that so uh, yeah, that's all she wrote for that circuit. So the focus with the runs is like to keep them easy. Again, I'm trying to get my heart rate up. I'm trying to get the, the legs going, but I don't want to run anything faster than like 
70% because I don't want to get fatigued. Those 200s were in 35, 36 seconds, um, which like felt good, didn't feel too quick or anything. I am going to finish up with some really light med ball, just like absolutely launch a really light med ball around, nothing feels better. And I'll show you some of that. All right, active recovery day is almost complete. We actually have one final stage left, so stay tuned. I meant to mention earlier that I choose what exercises I incorporate into the circuit based on kind of like where I'm at. So um, usually it's like the prehab exercises that I'm focusing on at that point um, in whatever kind of areas of my body I think need a little extra focus. So these do vary each week. Hoping that the biggest takeaway from this video is basically that your active recovery day needs to be unique to you and your needs and you know as you get older as an athlete and you gain maturity it's kind of hard for um, your coach to tell you what you should be doing on active recovery day because they don't really know how you're feeling eventually you know you should be able to get to a point where you're making that decision for yourself you know as i said earlier i've learned through you know just my years as an athlete and experimenting with various things what works for me um, I've learned that the bike doesn't necessarily do it. I can't just do like straight 100s or straight 200s in terms of like going out and doing eight 100 meter strides or something because I tend to overdo it. So I need to have exercises in between to kind of like slow me down. Even if I find tomorrow that what I did today worked great for me and I feel really good, this won't necessarily be what I do next week because I probably won't feel this exact same way next week. So, you know, it's all about being adaptable, making the call, listening to your body, staying in tune, yada yada. Um, so in summary, this video probably really wasn't helpful for you because it is completely unique to me and you're not me. But hopefully, um, you know, my mindset around Active Recovery Day was helpful to you and it can help you in developing your own strategy for it. So in summary, we did some yoga and mobility. A jog, a really easy dynamic stretching warm up. Hurdle mobility, easy circuit, kind of made the call as I went. I didn't need to do as much as I had planned. Med ball, and now we're off to the grand finale. Stay tuned. All right, it's going down. The world's most painful ice bath. So our Airbnb doesn't have a tub or cold water for that matter, the shower only spits out like lukewarm water at coldest yeah. so the other day after saturday speed endurance we knew we needed some cold water to get everything flushed out flushed out um and we both felt pretty good after so now we're making a habit of it but it's really really painful like i don't have ice baths often so i don't know if this is normal but like my feet are oh, just yeah. in so much that's normal yeah so if you have any advice for combating the most pain you've ever felt in your feet when you try to have an ice bath, let me know below. It doesn't help that like it's really windy too. Yeah. So like it's just cold on your upper body. During yesterday's ocean ice bath, um, a seal popped its head up literally like 10 meters away from us and it was very alarming. And then we both spent the rest of the 10 minutes kind of scared. So here's hoping that doesn't happen again. I mean, we weren't scared. We're not scared. I'm scared. We're not scared. The traditional cross your arms and walk in. feet I know I need to go out further to actually submerge like at least my knees but I find that to combat the foot pain I have to take it in sections oh god okay I did it the hams are submerged 
Once like two minutes passes, it's always fine. Like I feel like I could stay here. Like, no, no, never mind. What am I talking about? Such a liar. <laughs> There's a seal. Hello. And this is how we're going to conclude recovery day. So it's just good to get the inflammation out, the joints. Good little flush, like Taylor said. So we are going to stand here for 10 minutes in agony. And we will see you on the next vlog. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know what strategies you have for active recovery days because I love um, incorporating new things and learning more about what others do. So thanks again for watching till the end and we will see you next time. Bye.